Revelation 5. Order. Revelation 5, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, you know what? I, I, I haven't even gotten to this. I'm, I, this might be in my notes. Um, I've prepared them so far ahead of time. But... Let me look at something real quick while y'all are talking back and forth one to another. No, 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 no. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. All right. Revelation chapter 5. Let me give you some brain medicine here for you, some learning, some knowledge. The fact that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This was one of the things that when I saw it, my jaw dropped. I did. I literally went, <gasps> Like I did one of those, and I've done that many, 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 many times. Uh, I still do it when I think of something uh, that God has given me from the scriptures. Either I'm just not thinking of anything, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit gives me some scriptures, and I'm going, <gasps> like that. Scares my wife to death. Um, or... If I'm reading something in Scripture and all of a sudden God ties it to something else in Scripture, which is usually how it works. And I remember with this, I just went, oh my. Um, Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book. Now, as I said last week, scholars have debated over what this book is. I've, I've read commentaries on this back in the day when I read commentaries. Some say it's the, uh, some say it's the title deed to the earth. Some say it's um, the book of, uh, of life where all the names are written in it. Some, and the list goes on and on and on of what people have dreamed up the book is. Bottom line is, you're holding a copy of it in your hand or in your lap. Okay? And, I, and I'm going to show it to you, I'm going to show it to you about a dozen different ways. He said, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book. Written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. So he's got this book. Good morning, sister. It more than likely was a roll of a book. That's mentioned in the scriptures, I think, in Ezekiel. A roll of a book. So we tend to think uh, of a book that is bound like our Bibles are, and that's the only thing a book means. And so the modern translations uh, will change this word from a book to a scroll or something else. But whether it's a spine-bound book like we're used to having, or it's a roll of a book, it is still... A book, according to the, how the scripture defines the word book. It, it could be either one, a, a spine-bound book or a roll, either, either way, okay? But the important part is, it was written within and on the back side. What does that imply to you? 
if it was written on both sides, the front side and the back side, what does that sort of give you the idea of? What does that mean to you? Number one, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you the answers. Number one, since it's written on the front and the back, it means you can't add anything to it. It's written on both sides. There's not room to add anything else. Okay? Uh, it's written with ink. Meaning, if you wrote it with pencil, what can you do with it? Erase it. You write it with ink. It's there. Yes, sis. On a police statement? Wow! I'm going to repeat that. Help me out with this. SIS works for the, the county deputies department. If people are coming in to fill out a police report, official police report, they're writing out a report, they're given lines to write on. When they finished writing out their testimony, if there's still lines on that, they have to put X's across those lines and sign it. And if on the back, draw a big X across the back and sign it. That signifies this statement is over and done with. That's to keep what from happening? Somebody adding to... This is why on a check, when you write out 100 and 00 over 100 line, why do you draw the line there? So nobody can put anything else on there. That's it. It's all you get. It's 100 bucks. Okay? Now, go hold your place there in Revelation uh, 5. And go to Exodus 32. Exodus 32. Man, I love this. God, listen, God I love you. I, I, I woke up loving God this morning. Thanking him. That's not, I'm not bragging about it. I'm just telling you. I, it, it, it was good to wake up loving God instead of being mad about something. Uh, verse 15 of Exodus 32. Moses turned and went down from the mountain. And the two tables of the testimony were where? In his hand. And the tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. Are you getting, are you getting the picture out of Exodus that this is a picture of Revelation 5? It's a foreshadowing of it. Because of the fact that when God wrote the Ten Commandments, He had two tables of stone and He filled... You know, we have this image in our mind of, you know, two tables with the writing on the front and that's it. But that's not how it was. God wrote with His finger in... By the way, in stone means you can't take... Letters off of it. Amen? Do you, remember, do you remember the big deal they were making about Y2K? About how all the computers were supposed to go bust because they weren't written to go past the year 2000 
They were written to go to 1999, and that was it. And supposedly it was supposed to crash. Airplanes coming down out of the sky, satellites falling into the world as we know it. The number one biggest problem from Y2K was with tombstones. When the husband died or the wife died and they engraved, they made a marker for him and her. They put his name on it, the date that he was born, the date that he died, back in 1985. And they figured by 2000, surely she ought to be kicked out of here. So they wrote her name and date of birth, 1931, um... Date of death, 19 blank. And she didn't die until 2003. What in the world are you going to do with that? Huh? No. They fi I think they figured out a way that they figured some epoxy or something like that to put in it to be semi-permanent or something. I don't know. I don't know what they did. But that was the biggest problem. Because you once a letter is etched into stone, can't get it out. Uh, FBI has a way, if you try to scrape the uh, serial number off a gun, well, the FBI has a way of scanning it so that because when you etch it in there, you're actually etching it in there deeper than what it's written. Because it changes the molecules underneath the part that you can see. So if a guy scrapes it off, they can use some kind of machine that sees beneath that and still see the serial number of the gun. Okay? They can do that. I don't know how they do it, but they can do it. But God was putting these letters on stone so that number one they could not be taken off and number two he was writing them on the front and on the back filling up both sides so that no words could be added to God's word and no words could be taken away from God's word and that is how God wanted it amen and God gets what he wants doesn't he I love this story when I read this and I saw that the book that was in God's right hand was written on both sides and that the book that God wrote with his own finger that he gave to Moses was written on both sides, I went, they're connected. These stories are connected. And here's Moses, like Jesus, coming down from the heavens, he's coming down from the Mount Sinai. He's Jesus coming down from heaven with God's law in his hand. And I'm just, wow! I guarantee you I've got a notebook that's got notes scribbled in there with this, with this understanding in it. Because I had already learned by then, Mike, if you don't write notes, you're going to forget all about this. And people... 20 years later, which is now, they'll never hear this because you'll forget all about it. But this I've never forgotten about. Now it was sealed with seven seals. We'll get into sealing later. But he said, I, back in Re Revelation chapter 5, verse 2, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. No man in heaven nor in earth nor under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Uh, the fact that it's in God's right hand. We started on this last week um, about the symbolism of the right hand. The symbolism of the right hand is strength. So I have two sides to my body. I have a strong side and a weak side. It doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed. If you're left-handed then you have two sides to your body, a weak side and a strong side. If you are left-handed, then the left side of your body is the strong side. It is the one that you can throw the ball with. Uh, it is the one that you can write with, even if it's upside down and backwards. Come on, that's funny. 
You ever seen people, left-handed people write? Anyway. Um, but that's, that's your strong side and a weak side. The Bible is strong side and a weak side. The New Testament is strong. The Old Testament is weak in that it's based upon the works of the flesh. And with the works of the flesh can no man ever be justified. But here we have the work of Jesus Christ from which every man can be justified freely from all sins by no works of righteousness of their own, simply by grace through faith. All people have to do is believe what God said. That's all they have to do. So anyway, that's where we were going last week um, with, the right, with the right hand. Now let me... Um, Let's do this. Notice in Revelation 1.16. He had in his right hand seven stars. What's the hand of power? The right hand. The seven stars are the seven churches. He has put them in his right hand and has given, they are his power. He has given them his power in his right hand. And out of his mouth with a sharp two-edged sword. Why is it two-edged? Old Testament, New Testament. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter and the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. Now we're understanding why. The mystery. of Why they're in, the seven stars are in his right hand. We're understanding that because that's where his power is. Uh, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Uh, now let me just run through so you don't have to keep up with me on this. You can if you want. But I'm going to run through some verses in the Bible. And there's, believe me, go home after church today and type in the phrase right hand on your Bible search software. And get ready to have a, have a Holy Ghost Bible party. Okay, since there ain't no football games on today. You can have you a, what's the Super Bowl next, next week? Okay. Um, Exodus 15, 6. Listen to what it says about the right hand. Thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. That's where I get the idea that God's right hand is the hand of power. O Lord, Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. Now, and remember this. What is in God's right hand? The book. What's in Christ's right hand? The, the seven stars, the seven churches, the seven angels of those seven churches. Um, those who have received power from the book that is in God's right hand. Can you honestly tell me that the Bible has given you power in your life where you did not have power before? Can you say that? I can. I sure can. The Bible gives you strength and power when you don't have it in yourself. Go to the right hand of God. Deuteronomy 33, verse 2. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran. And he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Why? Because he wrote, just, I kind of see it just like they visualized it uh, in the movie, The Ten Commandments. We're... Charlton Heston's up on the mountain and all of a sudden this fire comes and pzzz, writes it in stone. It is a fiery law for them. 
Uh, yea, he loved the people. All the saints are in thy hand and they sit down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. Now, he loved the people. All, all his saints are in thy hand. What hand is that? The right hand. Because remember, Christ is holding the seven stars, which are the seven churches and the seven candlesticks. He's holding them in his right hand. Is there any man ever going to be able to pluck them out of God's hand? No. It's not ever going to happen. He loved the people. Amen. And then, he, then he tops it off by saying, everyone shall receive of thy words. That means you can guarantee you have every word of God in your hand. Guarantee it. Psalm six, I love Psalm 1611. Psalm 1611, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Now, maybe some of you used to hold a whiskey bottle in your right hand. Some of you used to hold a cigarette in your right hand. Some of you used to hold marijuana in your right hand. All oh, these are pleasures. These bring me pleasure. Put them down, pick up a Bible and start reading it. I guarantee you, you're going to get greater pleasures than you ever got out of a bottle, out of a cigarette, out of a joint, ever from anything. Amen. Psalm 16, 7. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand. Them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. How does God save people? By what's in his right hand. The book. And how does he save? Who does he save? Those who put their trust in him. So if I go around asking people, if I got a book Bible in my hand and I go around asking people, do you believe that God can save you with the words that are in this book? Everybody who says no way, no how, they're right. There is no way and there is no how. But you find that one who the spirit just stirs them up. And if you ask them, do you believe that God can save you with the words that are in this book? They'll gladly, with tears in their eyes, say, that is exactly what I believe. And you'll find people. I've had people call who they started out, and this is just how God, this is just how God did it. I mean... I know some of you don't study what some of the things I study. I get that. I'm not asking you to. But because God gave me an inquisitive mind on weird stuff. Okay? Haunted houses, ghosts, Bigfoot, UFOs, things like paranormal, conspiracy theories. When people were started to look on the internet for videos that dealt with those subjects, they found mine. Because that's the way the YouTube algorithm works. YouTube gave them videos that they knew they wanted to watch. Because YouTube learned you after a while. They didn't realize it at the time. They thought they were just going to learn some, some little piece of information about the New World Order or about the Illuminati or about UFOs or whatever. They may not have realized it at the time. But God had every intention on pouring his scripture, his word into their heart. And the more videos that they watched. The more word they got. And then pretty soon I'm getting an email or I'm getting a call from somebody. 
and they are in tears saying you have no idea I was just looking around, digging around on the internet, and I found your videos, and I started watching them. And you said something in one of them, and buddy, it's like, how did he know me? Well, I didn't, but God did. And he said, you said things to me that only God knew about me. And he said, I started I went out and got a King James Bible and I started reading it and all of a sudden God started dealing with me about my sin and I'm saved now because of that. However we can reach them. That's how we're going to reach them. Now, I'm just letting you know I'm seriously thinking about going to the MUFON conference next year or this year it's in Denver, Colorado. At least it's not Las Vegas. But with what happened at the one in Las Vegas, those people out there are the ones that I think we could reach one or two or 20 of them, or maybe more than that. Who knows? But they're the ones who are looking for truth. And I've got the truth right here in this book. Amen? So they're finding it. Um, Psalm 18, verse 35. Amen! I got an amen from a guy that I know that was his testimony. Okay, I baptized him here in this church. Psalm 18, 35. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. What did God's right hand do? It held you up. What was in God's right hand that held you up? His word held you up. The book that was in his right hand is the one that held you up when you couldn't stand on your own. It held you up. Psalm 20, verse 6. Now, now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. The book of, in God's hand is, what, is where the saving strength is. Psalm 21, 8. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy hand shall find out those that hate thee. Now, this book, there are two types of enemies for me. Actually, three. But One of the enemies is my own sin, my own transgressions, my own wrongdoings, my own failings. My own arrogance and pride and things I said that I shouldn't have said, but I didn't know I shouldn't have said it. And then I'll read something in the scripture and I'll go, oh no, what I did was wrong. And I find that out in the Bible. Then, man, several years ago, we had a Jezebel here. This goes back before practically any of y'all. We had a Jezebel here that was trying to that was trying to have herself placed in a position of authority in this church. And I didn't recognize it right away. But I kind of started picking up on some things and I was just, one day, I was just like, I'm miserable. God, I am, I'm just messed up. There's something wrong in this church, and I don't know what it is. God, will you show it to me? So I did one of these deals. I opened up the Bible. And I opened up to a place, and it was where Jehu was being asked by the guy that rode out on a horse, is it peace, is it peace? 
And Jehu said, there is no peace as long as Jezebel and her witchcrafts continue. And I went, well, that's not it. And I went to turn to another place and the Holy Ghost said, don't you dare. Go back and read that again. And at the time, I read it again and I said, okay, I believe you. But I didn't know at the time who it was. Well, I won't tell you the whole story. But they up and left by the end of that day, they up and left. Boom, down the road, and never to come back ever again. That's God doing that. That's God doing that, okay? And wasn't anybody y'all know, okay? Wasn't anybody y'all know. But it happened that day, okay? God will let you know who your enemies are and who your friends are from his right hand. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Amen. For they, Psalm 44, for they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but by thy right hand. And how did Gideon conquer his enemies he said the sword of the lord which is what the bible and all of a sudden everybody takes off running and gideon's going well, that was easy thy right hand shall find anyway we got to go thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor unto them god will do you a favor god will do you a favor you don't deserve Amen. Father, I love you. I thank you for this book. God, there's more in it that we could possibly imagine. More in it that we could possibly ever in a lifetime find out how much good there is for us in this book. But God, we sure wouldn't mind on this journey of life if you try to teach us some of it, we sure wouldn't mind at all. God bless this holy book. We pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen.